welcome back to Worlds 2023, where Gen G have just struck back in their series versus BLG. This quarterfinal now two and one in favor of the LPL second seed. This team came very close to reverse sweeping T1 and MSI. This team, I think it's fair to say, is pretty momentum based. Chronicle. Oh yeah, absolutely. So now that they've got the wind in their sails, now that they can feel a little bit more confident, we look at the draft moving into game four. And the question marks become, now that you're back on the red side, what do your priorities become? Do you still highly value the Maokai? Do you feel that you actually have an answer to the Jarvan? Is the Kaiser the solution? At the very least, I hope they do more of it than they did in game number two, yep. right? Game number two, uh, we saw none of the traditional advantages that you want in a red side draft. And we are already seeing the Renata being bent away. I wouldn't be surprised if they end up adding the Rumble as well, given that uh, <laughs> uh, Bin was able, even though it was his career first, to have a really good performance on it. And the combo is strong as the Yone from Chovy will get banned away. And I'm sure he's going to be looking towards something else that can have a big impact. It's not going to be the Rumble, it's going to be the Jax instead. Do you think they makes... prioritize the Akali? Do you think that they I maybe... think they will, yeah. Because like it's clearly proven that I don't think that Chovy was the difference maker in that game, but I felt that he could do more on Yone than he could do on the Azir, oh, which in 100%. and of itself was already a big difference, and maybe BLG felt that pressure. So now I wonder if the game plan here from Genji is, hey, you know what? Let's actually just make sure we get Chovy something that he can have agency on. The Rumble, yeah, Rumble still Maokai, available. Right? Like, that's, that's what I'm looking towards here. There's two options. Either we go Rumble Maokai or we go Rumble Vi. And the Vi would set up something like an Ari from Chovy. Even and a Nico if you wanted Nico, it. Nico, yeah, another oh, possibility. Nico. And I, I think this is a good choice for Genji. I think that they have seemingly realized if you just let BLG play the game, you are going to get run over. In the last game, they got away with it through some great team fighting in the mid game, but it was still a very, very close affair. We'll see if Peanut can recuperate from some of the mistakes he's made this series on this Vi. And yeah, it's 100% going yeah, it to be a trophy pick on R3 here. The, uh, the Nico, I think Nico is also pretty good into the Akali as well. So kind of deters that pick that Kasante locked in for Bin. He's hovering it. I feel like something like an Ari might be better when paired up with a Vi into this matchup. I'm not saying that it's an easy one, but I can tell you right now, it's easier than playing Akali into Nico because that's just a really miserable experience. It feels like you're not going to have any fun in the laning phase, and then even after that, are you actually going to be able to stick on towards that back line? He's doing it. Akali locked for Chovy, and we give credit to Gen.G for being momentum-based. Well, in game three, it was those comfort picks that really helped them. The Yone going over to Chovy here. Another comfortable pick for him in the Akali. Will it be enough? to keep Genji in this series. Caitlyn Bandaway, probably going to see a slew of AD carries removed here. The Nautilus removed by BLG. Rakan has been off the menu alongside that Renata for basically the whole series. A few things I think BLG have learned in this series is number one, take delight off of engaged supports. Yeah. Uh, and number two, try and take that agency away from Chovy. And while I do think that Nico into Akali can be good in the early laning phase, later on, the moment that Nico uses her E, there's nothing she can do to stop an Akali. Yeah. So in a side lane, this champion is going to become a massive threat. I think that synergistically, when I look at what Genji have for themselves, I don't love everything that they've put together, but Rumble Vi, I still think, can be an effective combo when it comes to locking down an AD carry. And Genji are removing those hyper-scaling AD carries as well. Kaelin's going to be taken away. The Aphelios removed away from Elk as well. The question is, will he go to his tried and true Jinx? Uh, or what else could we potentially see from Elk? Yeah, I was about to say, I think they're 100% looking to go for the Kai'Sa, so I'm really happy Kalista, to see that though, being banned away. That is true. Would be a lane-focused pickup for Pace in the Light, which is not where they have excelled. Obviously, Pace's predecessor, Ruler, was notorious for getting Kalista banned even when it wasn't meta, just because his dominance in lane on the champion was absolutely monumental. We're going to see the R5 counterpick like BLG used. Genji's going to try again, this time with the Kalista. It's only Paze's sixth Callista game across the course of his career. Obviously, has been a relatively short career. Only oh, yeah. a couple of years so far. BLG can look for aggression to match aggression in the bottom lane. Tristana for Elk 
would be very powerful. I Ash, like the Ash more. Ash Braum is actually hellish to well, play into if you're Callista. There's two things attached to this. Ash into Callista is good. Ash into Akali Rumble, yeah. not so good. Uh, so for now, they're going to lock in the Tom Kench. The question is, what are they going to do? You, you can see the discussion from the coaching staff. What are they thinking about? What AD carry? They wanted a little bit more time. Will they go for something like the Zeri or the Jinx? Elk's Jinx? Getting excited for Elk's Jinx. Instead, the Ash now hovered Okay. for BLG. And looks like that is going to be locked in. Yeah, BLG trying to get the best of both worlds, where you get the Ash into Kalista matchup, which obviously you're going to be very happy about, while simultaneously having at least some sort of defense. I actually think Kench into like Akali and Vi feels amazing. I do think, though, that this should be a counter pick for Delight, which would make the lane maybe. I'd like a Bard oh, here. I was going to say, yeah. I'd really like Bard here, actually. The realm kind of works more in Delight's wheelhouse. It is yeah. very much more in his wheelhouse. I'm a bit more disappointed in it, but the he's still an incredibly good realm. Still yeah. from Ral can be pretty effective against the Tom Kench. Um, but all right, Genji, I would say the closest thing we saw to a composition like this was when they played into T1. A lot more early game focus. They fell short in the early game, then actually came back in the later game team fights. Um, I don't think it's imperative that they actually get mid ahead. I think that it's important that they get Doran through the laning phase. And I also think that it's important that they find some advantages in the bot lane 2v2. Ash Tom can be super obnoxious to play against. Um, but yeah, I think that this game is going to come down to a lot of team fight execution. And this is where I think a champion like Akali Vi can really thrive uh, and make life difficult for, for Yagao and, and Elk. It's also with the Nico and Ash, um, I, I think BLG do have the ability to uh, try and even if one of those two gets taken out, you still have the Jarvan, which early game is a big threat. I do think both teams are going to feel a little bit worried if this goes to late. I think Ash does have a lot of power, especially compared to the Kalista, but then uh, the other parts, right, particularly the Akali, I think in a side lane is going to be... There's no answer uh, for anyone on BLG, but I do think Genji's early game, not traditionally where they excel, and you have a mid lane that's going to lose a lot of prio in the first six levels and a bot lane that needs to get out, so even more so than ever, it's gonna come down to the jungle, I think. Peanut and Shun, who gets to have the biggest impact here? The crowd, woken from their slumber by Genji picking up a game in this series. I will also say, we've seen a lot of tech of the Akali Nico matchup. If you are Akali and you hit Nico with an ability, if Nico is a minion when you hit her, you don't get your passive. You don't get to run in and out and get the extra auto attack. She's classed as a minion. APA brought that up on his Twitter, and we have all been amazed by it all, ever since. Alongside I say, that, I, I was gonna say, I played a lot of Akali, yeah. and I think I played it into Nico as well a bunch of times, and I've never once experienced yeah. that interaction. That's pretty funny. The other <laughs> side of the interaction is if Nico hits you with a spell and she's a minion. You don't get your Doran shield or your second wind regeneration because she's a minion. <laughs> and so it can be a very tricky lane for the Akali to play. Couple of notes here. We already see the level one being very nicely utilized by BLG as they go in really aggressively here, knowing that Genji doesn't really get to contest. Uh, so that means Peanut's going to be set behind very early on. We also have Doran, who didn't go for Ignite. We see that mostly in the Cassante. Bin also not opting into the Aftershock, which is common uh, tech you see into the Rumble, so he can at least win the short trades. Not going to be the case here. And uh, with Doran going for TP, his impact on the map should be greater. This early vertical jungling, though, I think exactly what BLG want, right? Try and keep this Kalista lane down right from the get-go. Seen this peanut pathing a few times through this series. We'll see if he realized, well, he does know he needs to vertically jungle because there was that ward on the Grom. Could, of course, look up towards the top lane, try and put Bin behind. If a rumble can start taking over, can be dominant. For the moment, though, just on his Krux, clearing out that top side. Chobi with a ward as well to spot Shunt if he does decide to path across towards his blue. And it looks like instead he's just going to play around that bottom lane. Yeah, this matchup is really fun if your name is Akali. Uh, she'll do what she can with uh, Doran Shield and Fleet Footwork. Um, but same for the bot lane, two versus two. He's already down to 250 HP. Elk with the slow as well. Remember, that slows Callista's attack speed, not yep. only her movement speed in the lane. 
That's why Ash so good into the Glister. Oh, look at the pivot here. Pina realizes that his bot lane is at the risk of getting dove. The side's the better of it. Yeah, Shun adjusting his pathing. I think he got spotted on oh, the he ward as well. His back. Uh, Pina yeah, is going to go for the blue. So Pina is on a ward. I think Shun, as you say, was spotted on the ward by the Razor Beaks. Does but Pina's is delight. You need oh, one level. more minion. You need something, get that level two. There we go, Delight has it, so does Patient. Looking for this, a lot of minions gonna be lost to the tower. TP in from Dorwin, but he can be stopped by Bin, and he is in fact in the top lane. Delight looked for the engage, flash away from on. Shun can go in now. EQ flash away from Pays. the flash doesn't follow, but Pays is dead. The flip back onto On is not enough. On not tanking the tower. Abyssal Voyage forward. The dodge from Delight. He still has Flash. Elk now tanking the tower. Shun and On haven't hit Elk. Uh, haven't hit Delight. And so in the end, it's a play. It's a kill. It's everything BLG wanted. Still going to be a really big win. And it's On and Elk that secure the initial advantage. Get pays low. And it's then the pathing from Shun pivoting away from trying to maybe punish Peanut in the pure 1v1. Instead, going towards that bot lane, and now you have Elk, who is sitting at a 15 CS lead and a kill into a Kalista. It's, uh, it's a bit of a disaster in the bot lane, two versus two. The split map from the jungle, the slow stacking wave into the dive, just something we've seen from Shun time and time again, and something that they execute to perfection. Matic, you highlighted it. The TP gets interrupted here from the Rumble. Great positioning from Doran initially to be like, okay, I'm here to assist. And then the TP comes through and BLG is like, all right, that's fine. Bin interrupts it. The calm is very clear. And then they go, oh, that wave is still big enough that we can commit to the dive. Still only level two for the bot lane of Gen G, and they make it look easy. It, it says a lot as well uh, as to the advantage that was already accrued uh, in terms of health that the flash flag and drag doesn't even hit, and it's still enough. Yep to take down the uh, Kalista there. He's really gonna suffer. We'll see if Peanut, once he hits level six, is able to get anything going towards that bot side. But right now, BLG have him right where they want him. Peanut looking for a lane gank here. And Shun's coming down as well. This way, pushing away from Pays and Delight means that Shun can just push forward himself. Elk trying to open up with the Rangers. Focus, the engage onto Elk. He still has Flash Heal, but he doesn't have time to get out. Delight gets the kill, not what you would have wanted for Gen G. Meanwhile, Bin trading with Doran in the top lane, and I know who's winning this one. Kasante doing Kasante things as the double flash has been used, but there's no dodge for the Q3, and as Doran puts on his dancing shoes. Can't find them in time, Bin with a solo. Look at the frustration on the fans' face. Elation as they get a big kill in the bot lane, and then disappointment as Bin wins out in the 1v1 top. The gold still remains even. Genji will secure the first dragon of game four. They're definitely not down and out just yet, but they needed to make something happen. Bot should now looking for something. Down looking for flank as well. No flash on Pays, none on Delight either, or even Peanut. Pays pops the cleanse, but he's been locked up and he'll be shot out of the battle. Shun takes the kill. Delight next on the menu. He's ready for a tongue lashing. Yagao flashes, but can't get in range to find the pot blossom. Delight escapes. And it's the aggression of BLG again. As Genji think, hey, after that bot lane play, we can go for Dragon, right? No, BLG is not gonna let you have that one without contesting. And even though they're not able to get the light as well, still a really big win as the Kalista now 0 and 2 should be able to pick up most of this wave, but it is the contest here with the priority roam from Yagao, plus his health advantage being really big. I mean, Pace just gets completely isolated, doesn't yeah. he, as well? Uh, the fact that Peanut's kind of zoned away, thanks to On using that Tarm Kench to just get in between the jungle and Delight means that uh, there's nothing that the AD carry can do. And Genji ended up losing a kill in exchange for the Dragon. 1k gold now, the advantage for BLG. Not the end of the world completely for Genji. And I want to just draw your attention to the mid lane. We talked about how this can be a very difficult laning phase, but Chovy's doing a fantastic job finding really good trading windows and uh, building a pretty healthy CS lead. And we talked about late game team fights in a side lane. The moment that that E is used on Nico, it's very easy for Akali to, to do whatever she wants in the 1v1. And then uh, this Kasante is going to be a nullifier, but I don't think anyone's going to be able to stop this Akali as we get later into the game. 
Yeah, you're really looking at On just trying his best to, tar to, to eat up whoever Chovy is going to target, but We've seen Chovy be able to, even in the team fights, be able to output a lot of AoE damage. The big thing here for me as well is that with how the game early has gone, the Kalista plan has uh, not been going very well. And from this point on, it is really hard to come back outside of like if you get completely untouched in an early skirmish. So it, it will come down, I think, to Chovy specifically. And this is a player who I think has Maybe the worst reputation when it comes to international performances true, on this man. team, which is crazy to me. Um, and I do think after this tournament, it'll be more Doran and Peanut focused as we do have a possible fight here. You can see the move from Pays and Delight first from the bottom lane. They pushed in that wave. They're on their way up here to join. BLG posturing around the Rift Hold. Bin and Shun up towards that top bush. It looks like they might give up the Herald, but then look for something afterwards. The Scryer's Bloom will spot them out. Pings come out and Genji using the priority they have in the mid lane to make sure that Peanut can secure the second neutral objective for the LCK first seed. So, I mean, this is, uh, in terms of objectives, I would say the best we've seen from Genji so far this series. Yeah. First Dragon and uh, first Herald. But these are things that you should be getting when you're playing with a Galista. You usually want to use her first item to look for fights, and I'm looking for a fight right now. This season assist from Peanut could come in if he can get there in time. They're just trying to lock up out for as long as the possible. Level up! Devour now used. He is level six. The season assist. Will they wait in time? Peanut can't get in range. His flash about five seconds away. Oh, a crucial level up there. If On doesn't hit six off of that wave, Elk is a hundred percent dead. But instead, they get the ultimate. They get the ignite, and Elk gets out. And Delight also not ticking over to six. If he'd had the Magnet Storm, that might have been enough to keep the Tarm Kench, if nothing else, to burn the Flash from the Tarm. But it wasn't quite enough. Props to Pays and Delight, though. They saw a window, they went for it. 0-2 on the uh, Callista. But they're, they're demonstrating how powerful she can still be in the early game. Especially when you have some CC that you can just chuck into the mix in the form of Delight. Fizzle Voyage forward here by On as they try and clear out Vision. Dragon up in a minute's time, 56 seconds on the Infernal Drake. And Genji will want to fight around it. Didn't get too many sums out of BLG, only the heal burnt for Elk. His flash coming back off cooldown. On, I believe, will have the Devour back up for this next fight. But still, cease and desist available for Peanut. Delight now ticking over to six. All summoners available for Pays And Chovy doing Chovy things, 108 CS. Building up towards that first item. Chenji will be looking at this Drake with bated breath. Can they find it? Chovy pushing forward. And it's kind of a must win for them here with the Callista composition, Chovy. Able to dodge away, seen by Oracle's alteration, but only takes a bit of chip damage. Rift Held still available to Genji, but with the push in the mid lane, Yagao and Shun can now help on and Elk gain vision control. And it looks like. Genji not looking to actually contest Chovy. this early Drake. Chovy! Pop Blossom just short. He dashes back onto Yagao, but Bin was there, so Chovy has to flash. Respects it. I actually think Yagao would have hit the root if he uh, if he didn't flash there, so then Bin could have changed his CC. It would have been enough. That should still be the Drake going over. Doran picks at least up a little bit of gold, but I think BLG is going to take that trade anytime whoa, whoa, as they whoa, whoa, teleporting whoa. in. Five second on face call. Delight and Doran looking for something here. The equalizer could come down, but. Just wasted in the end. What is the game plan there for Genji? The dragon's already dead. The LG are obviously disengaging, I guess. The logic is that they want to zone Elk and On away from the bot lane. So yeah, they, they also have Herald. Plates. They so do they have the Herald, all right. TP, Bin realizes the plan. Now they have, they have to but die. He's alone. But Shun is on his way. Like, can you kill Bin at this point? You We're have about to find out, Only Medic. a Divine Sundra, the Equalizer down onto Bin. Doesn't take too much damage. The Rift Hell charges in the Magnet Storm there, as well as the Enchanted Crystal Arrow hits underneath the tower. Bin dashing away, surviving Fate's Call used as well. But Peanut, with excessive force, finds the kill. Does mean the tower doesn't fall. Pays will be able to get three plates out of it. Counter TP used up towards the top side as Chovy answers Yagao's push. Elk is pushing in mid. Excessive force indeed. That is a lot invested. And it almost goes wrong, but they will be able to pick up the kill and also put a lot of gold into Pays. This player had been put down by the early attention from Sean, plus the 2v2 from Alcan on. And Genji finally able to, uh, to get themselves to a gold lead here. So I was skeptical of the TP, but credit to Genji. They, they were able to make it work very nicely. 
overall, yes, they did lose the Dragon, but the amount of gold that they were able to invest in the bot side of the map, it seemed like a promising idea, the TP from Bin, but I think he immediately realized after the TP, hang on, I've completely isolated myself from the rest of the team. I think it was Shun that tried to make his way down bot lane to offer that assistance, but it was too late, and Genji committed four members to find that kill. So three to two is the kill score. Genji now have a 1k gold lead. And this early game overall is very even, but I think that when you kind of look at the context of the series, Genji's confidence is at an all-time high. You feel as though that the momentum from BLG has just slowed down, considering for the first three games, they were just like, it felt like that they were unstoppable in terms of their early game fighting. And a lot of that comes through allowing Chovy freedom on the map, as he will have later on, but also allowing Pays and Delight a bit more freedom in the bottom lane. This game has been a bit more tricky. Look, Steve's still there. He's doing his best. Yeah. I think, I think he might get taken down here, but uh, hopefully he hangs out around for a little bit longer. <laughs> hey, still, 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 still good to go. So what I want to highlight as well is that Chovy hasn't actually been involved in any of these plays. And he is uh, at, at 160 CS at 14 minutes as a Kali. Once he actually starts joining these skirmishes, we'll see how BLG finds a way to deal with it. I do think that the BLG wombo combo between Cassante, uh, J4, and Nico is something that we haven't really seen them get an opportunity to use. True. And it's something that Gen.G really needs to respect. It's just... There's something about Akali in this comp that just looks really good to me. I feel it's a like gut the, feeling. Well, I think I mean, it's the nameplate just above it, <laughs> to be honest. Hell. I mean, it. Uh, I'm a big Akali fan. I play her a lot, and there are like definitely good games and bad games, depending on the comp that you're playing against. And I just, you're definitely right. In the hands of Chovy, I just look at what you're playing into, the carries. And I, like, aside from Tom Kench, we might see it right here. Just looking for Elk, maybe trying to get the Devourer down. Does have the flash, doesn't have the flash in fact to get away. Enchanted Crystal Arrow into the Magnus Storm. Chovy extending forward, but the Devourer still available for BLG here as Pace tries to get on towards the back line. But Delight now pulled out with the Fates Call. Abyssal Voyage forward by On Chovy. Walking away, wounded on with the flash forward. And Shun coming in from the side. Chovy cataclysmed and brought to his knees and BLG strike. I mean, that may be the biggest cast of curse I've done in recent history. Hang on. They thought it was on. It was Yagao, and he has the time to flash and escape. The Drake still 50 seconds from spawning. We're fighting over a blue buff. The yeah, Akali will be back alive and has TP soon. Yeah, we'll see, though, because that was a really heavy investment. If they get Drake, I think BLG call worth, but otherwise, like, that is... What, four flashes True. in the end? Yeah. Just to kill Chovy, who didn't have his flash available, does end up going down. But I think it depends on who actually gets the setup for this dragon here. Ocean Drake, particularly with how much sideline action I expect, going to be really big here. And Yakao didn't complete the rocket bell. He uh, went back to base, didn't have enough money, and now the TP has been used. So I thought that Chovy was actually going to look for a kill here but uh, decides, you know what, it's not worth it. He looks at the position on the map and realizes this isn't a good fight for me. Good ultimate from Elk. And then Delight is kind of forced to fight here to keep his mid laner alive. Pays gets zoned out of the fight, nice thanks to a nice route from Yagao. And then Genji are immediately forced to retreat. Jun, you're gonna see him land a good ultimate here, and he's gonna get that shut down as well. So 400 gold goes over to Shun. And uh, with the Herald being secured, perhaps that's a, an opportunity for Genji to cross map and trade for the Dragon. Would be their second of the game. This Dragon taking, stalling a little bit after managing to pick up the first one. But they do still have a thousand gold lead here, even if the kill scoreline is a little bit misleading. A lead for Pina and for Chovy. Not as great as they would like this portion of the game. And this is something that Genji was known for in the LCK as well, being able to get favorable macro trades. We'll see if they get the Dragon though, particularly with the opportunity for BLG to just overload and just throw down a Herald, try and uh, push down. They can do that, they can also look for a contest. BLG have given up the ghost on this one. You can see you go walking yeah. forward. I'm nah, just going to clear the way. Not Should, feeling it. Just taking the red as well. And I, I think a lot of it comes down to what you mentioned, Chronicler, which is they invested a lot. Yes, you have Pop Blossom. Yes, you have the Cataclysm, but you don't have Flash on any of your bot side of the map or your jungle or your mid. So if you look for more, Genji can't collapse on you. Magnet Storm back up. There's the Rift Herald in the mid lane as 
Only Pays is there to try and dissuade BLG, so it'll be at least one tower. Maybe two if they wanted to go in with the charge, but it looks like instead they will retreat and work their way towards the top side. No vision here for Gen G. Oh, it's Control War deep behind at BLG's blue. Can Chovy survive what could be a five man dive? Gao coming in as a clone of Elk, and Chovy will realize. As the arrow hits, he might be just caught out. He tries to flash, but he can't get away in time. Knocked back with the Intopos. And Chovy stayed a little bit too long. Didn't respect the arrow from Elk. And a nice snipe comes through from Elk. Now PLG with, I was going to say five members strong, but Bin choosing to reset means that they can continue the siege onto the top tier two. And that is also Chovy investing his flash, right? In yeah. the previous play, didn't have it. So it's going to be a very favorable trade here for BLG. Genji is able to answer. So it's not the end of the world, but still a big win. They might be looking to try and catch some stragglers here. Chovy does have TP, but doesn't look like anyone is going to be uh, available. And it'll just be Genji trying to make the best of a rough situation. He not spotted an award as he jumped into the Baron pit. I mean, I think Shun maybe would have stayed around, locked up for a second. And another, and another, but even with the Ignite, Shun able just to gore drinker his way away. <laughs> his delight knocked back over the wall there by Peanut. Not sure that was the intention, but it was the conclusion of the play. Oh, hang on now. I don't love this invade from Gen G. Now, just taunting. Oh, it, oh. oh, okay. Peanut tried to smite as the patience ran out. Yep. And Shun got the smite on the way back. That's unfortunate for Peanut. It was a little scary because of the uh, numbers the BLG had, but the Genji were able to get away. Uh, gold, pretty much dead even now. It's kind of been a back and forth of a 1k shift from either side. And... Oh, he stuck his way. Yagao was so oh, he, suspicious, he though. He doesn't like it. Jovi looking for it. Yagao still has flash. Jovi able to dash away. And, and something I want to highlight is the fact that so many of these players from BLG have been set up by Elk. And we've seen a lot of Elk like team fight carry in this tournament. It's Tristana, his Jinx, right? But Ash is, I think, such a different champion from a very stylistic point of view, where so much more of the value comes from the ultimate, plus your ability to consistently hit arrows. And thus far, I feel like Elk has uh, done a really good job of consistently finding these arrows towards the side lane, setting up and leading to the kill score lead for BLG. As the tempo and the pace of the game slows down a little bit, I have to feel we're just waiting for the next Drake to spawn would be third of the game for Gen.G. They'd wish that was four. Obviously, BLG getting that earlier Drake slowed down their game a lot. For BLG, still only one game away from making it to quarterfinals, from joining Weibo. First time we've ever had four LPL teams in the quarterfinals, and maybe if things go the way the top side of the bracket could be going, maybe the first time we've ever had all LPL semi-finals as well. I think people will look at that bottom side of the bracket and think, well, JDG probably, and then T1 LNG, a very close series. The era of LPL dominance returning after a brief delay last year at Worlds. Peanut stepping forward here as the engage comes in from BLG and Peanut's locked up. Yagao pops blossoms as Genji starts to go pop. The equalizer coming down and Shun now on the wrong side of the rip. But he can just EQ back to join his team. Pays rooted with the tango bars as Chovy looks for the back line with the devour. Saved for this eventuality. He has to dash away. And a perfect execution from BLG. And that's vintage Peanut just steps forward, gets caught, and now BLG making their way over to the Baron. No smite for Genji. But a fight perhaps begins to materialize. No tangle barbs, remember, for BLG, only the Cataclysm. And a devour put on. Do you go in with the Magnus Storm? You do. Delight tries to dive in. Dorman trying to burn BLG alive as on. It's taken out by the re-engage from BLG. Perfection executed once again. Dorman and Chovy in a 2v4 fighting for the lives of Gen.G, for the lives of the LCK, but can't find it. BLG get the Baron. A fantastic play from BLG. That pick from Peanut is exactly the window that they were looking for. Without a second of hesitation, they start the Baron and they find themselves even more kills. And Peanut walks up here, but BLG is so ready. It's again the arrow, the setup is there, and then the chase down comes through. Genji have to invest so much. The Fates Call, the ultimate, and the summoner or the cleanse rather from Pace, meaning that 
Even with Bin coming in, he isn't even necessary. He's just to, there to secure the Baron. It's also just a disjointed engage. The Akali ultimate is now unavailable. Like, Delight goes in, but what do they really have to reliably follow up? There's the engage. Pays does what he can. Torin is standing on the edge. Chovy drops, what, a bit of damage onto the support, onto the Tarm Kench. It's an easy turn for BLG, and they'll get a Dragon to boot. And now Genji staring down a very long walk back into this game. Two items complete on Pei's Ginsu's and the Blade of the Ruin King. Yagao here, cease and desist coming out as they try and lock him up. Doesn't have the flash, but has the pot. Blossom, Choby dashes in, dashes back, dashes out, and dashes forward for the kill. Peanut takes it. Can they get out though? Looks like they will be. BLG don't want to overinvest towards the top side of the map on the cross map. Bin is able to still push. But the Red Bull Baron Power is going to lose a lot of momentum from that pick. The TP now coming through. But as you rightly said, it will slow BLG down a little bit, but I don't know if it's enough. The wave clip. Oh! Magnusaur flash engaged the equalizer down as well as the TP. Genji have pulled the trigger and they're looking to burst out Elk. Chovy dashing around and Elk will fall. It's hunting season for Genji and they found what could be the biggest kill of them all. They found a way back into game four. I thought that it wouldn't be enough, but Genji just shut me right up. A beautiful engage in mid lane. Catches BLG completely off guard. And just like that, as you said, Medic, Genji have found a lifeline. Might be able to get the kill on Bin here as well, and he's going to be disjointed. Uses the mobility. Oh god, Cassante thinks. Yeah, Bin just doing Bin things here on the Cassante, and Tofu's come out. Shields! The short slings off the plate is not enough. The shield's not enough to keep Cassante alive. Genji. Get those death timers on a bit of, of an uneven keel. Still only a thousand gold in it, but look at this. The light just decides to go in. And there is a reason why Gen G fans were saying, why is the light not on engage? It's moments like this. He was able to do it on Breon, he's able to do it on Gen G. And it is a really important moment because, as you're saying, with the Red Bull Barrel Power but in favor of BLG, they were pushing. It starts with the pick towards the mid, or towards the uh, top side of the map on Yagao, but then they're able to actually take down, and you can see the tense coaching room there for Gen G. They know what's at stake here. I mean, Peanut completely redeemed the misplay that he made earlier, nullified the Baron, and now both objectives, two and a half minutes until they're back out onto the map. More time for both sides to farm, more time for items to be completed. But again, I draw my eyes towards the mid lane and I look at these items now being finished for Chovy. Level 15, soon to hit level 16. Elk. Equalizer. Elk has flash heal. He tries to get across the wall and gets into the razor he pit, but on is deleted. Chovy looking for more. He's going to dive forward into four members. He has a stopwatch, but does he have enough time? The pop blossom comes out. Chovy survives as he gets off towards the top side of them. It's Yagao. And Busan roars into life once again. And there is no objective up. But Gen G, it feels different in this fourth game. They should be able to, at the very least, get themselves a turret here. And again, Yagao gets caught out on Guy saving Elk. The momentum has clearly swung. What felt like a doomed game state for Gen G after losing that Baron, after losing another Dragon. It's just. Everything for Genji. Look at this play. Elk isolated. They cannot protect him. He's forced to flash over the wall. The arrow goes wide. The support is dead. And then look, Shun gets close to Elk, which means that Chovy sees that as a window. The stopwatch is good. And then he flashes away from Yagao, who's then left isolated by his team. Now Chovy in danger. By himself down in the bottom lane, but he's going to get out the hymnal. Take a pew. BLG Church is in session, but the Abyssal Voyage trying to turn it back around. Chovy able to dash away. Pina trying to get across the wall. He dodges from the Intofu. It's not quite enough range for Bin. The Dragon up in a minute. Enough time for Gen G to reset. Chovy almost scored out. And there's that threat from BLG. A single misstep, and Gen G can still get taken down in this game. Peanut forced to flash there, won't have that available. We'll be able to get onto the back line just as easy. Dorn didn't have teleport that crucially. Will be uh, off cooldown just about now. 
meaning that if BLG, anything they would have gotten now could have set up for this Drake. It is just soul points for either team, so wouldn't be surprised with the lack of control. BLG is going to say thank you to that one. Baron also up, so he might even see them try and play towards that if Genji missed that. I mean, so much of the credit needs to be given to Delight. You guys were talking about him earlier. We're going to be keeping our eyes on him as the game continues. He made that mid lane game-saving play. Let's see if Shun. he can find another. Shun looking for a fight. Look oh, Delight! Jovio as Delight goes in. On trying to keep Elk alive. The pop bottom comes out just in time from Yagao. But Yagao is yeah. gone. And BLG might be too. Elk trying to do everything he can. But Elk has been mounted on a wall. Delight survives. BLG die. And hey. G do it all. They have fought back from the absolute brink in game two. And it looks like we're going all the way. It's a clean ace for Gen G. The Nexus is in their eyes, and they're looking to. Oh, oh, oh no. never, mind. never mind. Out of the eyes. They're out of the eyes. Blinds put them back on. The Baron is in their eyes. What a team fight. And one engaged, just as we were talking about him. Delight again. What an incredible engage. He finds three members, and how does Elk even get to play the game? He doesn't. And to me, this Rumble, I don't even feel like Doran is necessarily having a pop-off game, but the Rumble has just made it so hard consistently. But as you already pointed out, the big enabler of all of this, it's the light. This man, I think his Enchanter play is fine, but these moments are what is winning Genji this game. And you see, even with Yagao trying to go for the ultimate, Genji plays very respectful. Bin actually, with some heroics, made that look close. Gets multiple uh, multi-man knockups, but it just isn't enough because Pays and Chovy are unmatched. Yeah, I mean, it's the combination of Rumble forcing all of those yeah. things out early. It means that the Akali then has free reign on the back line, and there's nothing to stop Chovy from just assassinating Elk. And then while all of that is happening, Pays is untouched. So he's just freely dishing out this damage. Five kills for him now. 2-1-11 for Doran. A 6k gold lead for Genji. They're looking to bring us to a game five. The momentum has very clearly swung in their favor and they will not slow down. They want to return to the world semi-final. They lost to DRX at the semis last year. They lost to BLG at MSI. And they want to prove that they can make the reverse sweep a reality. Just the inhibitor line between them and the biggest prize of all of that nexus the arrow the arrow onto doran but delight is in the way if blg overstep there's the equalizer already doran getting chunked out and doran is done so chovy pushing in the mid lane delight can re-engage no flash for him to disengage this Shun. though Shun misses the flag and drag across the wall the stun from delight chovy starting to collapse there's the face call out blg could chase but they decide instead to make sure their mid lane is still healthy the inhibitor tower already down tp now from bin as he tries to make sure jovi can't get another tower out of this push really big window there for blg they're able win though not window just want to clarify i mean they're both able. Of them. it actually is both yep. they're also able to take a lot of the wind out of the sills of these baron power players which it has been something where genji actually uh, have been super consistent domestically like when they get baron it's done, right? So picks like this on Doran, even with a stopwatch available, I might add, uh, are really, really big and mean. The BLG, even though they are down, they are not out. That Wombo combo still exists. It just is more about, can they regain map control? Because I feel like that's been really kind of the advantage that Genji have had ever since that catch that they got here on mid. Um, they just haven't really ever been able to get like Yagao with a big flank into the enemy backline. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these fights have actually been started by Gen G. Yeah. Finding these opportunities, Delight being the initiator, and I, in an ideal world, you as BLG want to be the one starting off the fights. But uh, Gen G. Oh, Yagao. No, 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 that's uh, not that's the, the real thing. one. You can always tell if it's not the real one because it's just doing a helicopter motion somewhere <laughs> randomly. It's like, could eh, you really be doing that? I want to give credit to uh, Delight as well for his itemization here, Abyssal Mask. Second item, really strong when you have a Rumble and a Kali, and when you're diving into the backline, that magic resist tread, so powerful in situations like this. 
may see the game slow down for the next couple of minutes because it's two and a half on Seoul for Gen G and two and a half on Baron for BLG or Gen G, whoever decides to fight around it. We're also starting to get to the point where there's a lot of defensive itemization available, right? So Bin was able to pick up a Renduins, already had a stone plate second. Then we have GA for both junglers here, and then double stopwatch on the side of Yagao and Elk. Uh, and then Doran and Chovy also with Zonyas in the pocket. Pace just sporting a regular one. And for BLG, the item breakpoints. Could have been worse. I think only mid lane is where it really feels backbreaking. Outside of that, they have been able to stay on pretty decent item parity. All oh, the tension mounts. The darkness is full of terrors. Ocean again. It's so spooky. <laughs> <laughs> I would say the Gen G are the slightly spookier thing here, but that's fair. The LG hey, have the. Ocean's the really deep, man. We haven't explored like 90% of that. Ocean Should be very, anything down it's there. It's a dangerous place. The LG will actually make their way up towards the Baron side of the map. A minute and a half until that spawns. I guess with their mid-prio, they can kind of take as much space as they want. The wave clear. I mean, the wave clear in Siege from Genji isn't the strongest. They really need another great fight to end this game. You see the uh, uh, Scuttle Crab taken by BLG. Gives them that little bit more vision. They know if they place any wards, they're not really going to stick. Shun hit is on a ward. Chovy and Peanut were eyeing him up, but decide that tasty morsel can be left for later. Just don't really want to go in where they're not quite sure where the rest of BLG are waiting. Yeah, it's also between like flag and drag, flash, GA. By the time you actually kill Shun, uh, reinforcements surely will have arrived. One thing that is a tough cookie to crack for BLG though is like who actually deals with Chovy. I think right now, Bin still able to match him relatively well with post void stuff. It's going to get harder as well. GA now down for pace. We'll have that available in the upcoming fight. And feels like the last stand here for BLG to ward off a Silver Scrapes. One last time. Delight is the player to watch for Genji. And if Yagao can find a flank, that'll be the difference maker. Chronicle was talking about it earlier. Oh, here he comes in. The Devourer immediately. Delight tanky enough, but Chovy is being dealt with by BLG right now. The Pop Blossom doesn't find it. Pace flashes the wall and immediately engages. Chovy's on a rampage now, and Gen G are just grinding up BLG. A double for Chovy. They wiped them away. The TP towards mid. Gen G are done with this game. He's 17 and he's flashing over a wall with his back against the wall. Pace still find the play. Bindo. You know, relentless force. And even more aggression from Genji. Delight and Pays after being put behind in the early game are putting on a clinic here at 35 minutes. It's game five, a reverse sweep on the cards for Genji. And Busan and all Korea are behind them. This series has taken a turn. After game number two, it felt like a repeat of MSI. But now, two to two, Silver Scrapes about to grace us again. And it feels like the Genji have found the formula. It feels like the BLG are the ones now pressured to go back to the drawing board. What a series it has been so far. We're going to go to a short break, but don't you dare go anywhere.